Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of St. Paul's and Nativity Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania. It is the fourth Sunday in Lent, and we are grateful that you are joining us. We pray that your Lenten journey with Jesus is going well. We do have several prayer concerns to keep before you this day. From Nativity, prayers for Ingrid, who was hospitalized and is now having more tests. We also pray for Joan and Tom. Joan was hospitalized and is now having rehabilitation at the Highlands. For St. Paul's folks, Leona S. was hospitalized and she is now recovering at the Lutheran home at Topton. Cheryl S. asked for prayers for her nephew, Zach P., who had gastric sleeve surgery and had some complications. Cheryl also asked for prayers for Sarah Z., who has um, asthma and had a severe asthma attack that resulted in severe complications. Today is the deadline for Nativity's Spaghetti Dinner. Um, Please call the church office to order your dinner. And St. Paul's would like to thank everyone for helping with the Easter egg candy making. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us worship Jesus.
Always remembering our baptism, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love, and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus Christ, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you, and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward, and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace, and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped, in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, 
they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me for the reading. Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guilt. While I held my tongue, my bones were withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in times of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fi fitted with a bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. A reading from 2 Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is for God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us we entreat you on behalf of Christ. He recon be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he became in need. So he went and hired himself out as one of the citizens of that country who sent him 
to his field to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, and I will go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father's. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring her a robe and the best one and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has gotten him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back and has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace, dear ones, beloved of Christ, from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who journeys with us in this Lenten wilderness and from the Holy Spirit, lively and with us daily. Amen. As we continue to journey with Jesus through this wilderness of Lent, let us take our three deep breaths. One for God the Father. One for God the Son. And one for God the Holy Spirit. I often invite you to read around the assigned readings for a Sunday or a Saturday. And this time, for Joshua and Luke, I'm inviting you to do the same. Because one of the things that we find is if we start with the beginning of Joshua 5, we learn some important things. When we go to Luke chapter 15, we realize that missing from today's reading are two other parables that Jesus shares. One about the lost sheep, the second about the lost coin, and then we get to today's gospel reading, which is the lost son. And so we have two amazing wilderness stories here in Joshua and in Luke. And these end even better with wonderful conclusions. Although, hold that thought till we get to Luke's gospel. We know that the Israelites left Egypt, and we know that after we, they left there, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. We read about their arrival in the promised land. 
the land that is flowing with milk and honey. One of the things that I learned as I was preparing for today is that the milk was probably from sheep or goats. And interestingly, the honey was actually grape juice that is reduced to a molasses-like syrup. Hmm. I was thinking it was honey from bees, but information shared otherwise. I was reminded, if you look at the beginning of the chapter, that circumcision had not been practiced since the Israelites left Egypt. It has been many years since they crossed the Red Sea. And since that time, none of those who were born in the wilderness have been circumcised. We learned all this at the beginning of chapter 5. All the men who came out of Egypt died in the wilderness. The boys and men who were born in the wilderness were never circumcised. The Lord told Joshua to make flint lives and circumcise them. After they had been, they remained where they were camped until they all were healed. Our reading begins... Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, meaning both the act of circumcision, but also removing the stigma of being slaves while they were in Egypt. In thanks for God's gift of the promised land, the Israelites are circumcised and celebrate two feasts, Passover and unleavened bread. A later law says two things about Passover. Men must have been circumcised to join in, and lamb must be eaten. Because the men were circumcised, and only manna was the food that was eaten in the desert, this is the first celebration of the feast of Passover since leaving Egypt. Manna is no longer needed for they can now eat off of the harvest. One life ends and another begins. One life ends and another begins as we get to our gospel reading for today. And it's really twofold, isn't it? Because on one hand, the young son, younger son demands his inheritance of his father. In other words, he's saying to his father, you are dead to me. Give me what I would inherit and let me have it now and I will go off. So the end of his life as the son, beloved of the father, is ending and he gains his inheritance and goes off and spends it foolishly in the eyes of so many. And actually, it was foolish, wasn't it? Because he ended up destitute. Now he was probably gone for several years into this wilderness of a Gentile land where he ends up feeding pigs. And he finally comes to his senses when he realizes that he doesn't have enough to eat, that the pigs have more than he has. And so he decides that he is going to return to his father and he rehearses what he will say to him that he has sinned against him and sinned against God and please take him back. So he is hoping to end this life of being in the wilderness, of being destitute, of being hungry, and he wants to return to his father, not as a son, but as a servant. And so he sets off to go back to his father. The father is waiting for him, obviously has been looking for him in all the time that the son has been away. And when he sees him, this son who was lost, he rejoices and he just runs out to greet him, which is so unlikely what a dignified father in that time and in that place would do. And yet he runs after him. Now, doesn't that remind us of God? God runs after us. God is always pursuing us, looking for us, wanting to be in relationship with us. And sometimes we run towards God and sometimes we run away from God. And in this case, 
There is the embrace of the father and the younger son, and there is the celebration because the one who was lost has been found. And then we hear about the older son, the one who has been faithful, the one who has been there, the one who has kept doing what his father expected of him. And his pent-up resentment comes out at that point. He says, you know, you, you never have done this for me. What's interesting to note is that the father leaves the guests who are there, which is really a breach of etiquette in that time and in that place, and he comes out to talk to the son. Now, the challenge for us, twofold, I think sometimes we look at the younger son and the older son and we think, um, which one more represents who I am? But the other thing is that we need to think about what happened after the party ended. The younger son is back in the embrace of the father. He takes his place in the household He perhaps does things to make up for what he had done to his father, how he had treated his father, perhaps becoming an obedient son. Maybe not. Maybe again it comes like, oh, I have this idea that I need to wander and do other things. And we ask the question, what happened with the older son? Does he stay or does he leave? Does his relationship with his father, has it been mended? Or is it there a breach? The question that we ask at the end of the portion talking about the lesson from Joshua is that one life ends and another begins. And so that's part of what our Lenten journey is, isn't it, dear ones, beloved of Christ? We have the opportunity to turn away from our old sinful life, to turn back to God and to begin a new life in God. And that's the blessing. That's the joy. That's the gift that Lent gives to us. We are on this wilderness journey, but we're not alone because Jesus is with us. And it is here where we can think and ponder and find new ways of interacting and worshiping our awesome and loving God that Father who runs after us no matter what, that God who gives us the gift of the promised land, the God who gives us a new life beginning in God. My prayer is that as we continue in Lent, you will continue to turn to God and run towards God as God runs towards you. Amen.
I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of these congregations. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share our Lord's peace with one another. Gladys, the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you, Pastor.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and all the baptized gathered here for this meal. Wash away our sins that we may be received and revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, with him, All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as we pray and sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Gladys, this is the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you.
given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Jesus Christ for good works chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Senhor. 